This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Many times you will need to change the angular position of an object. It could be the position of a house on a piece of property or a chair in a room. Perhaps a gear needs to be rotated in your drawing. There are many reasons that you may need to rotate something. AutoCAD is very specific on how it rotates objects. As you might have expected, you type in the word rotate to get the rotate command, or RO, or you can go to the ribbon. In the Home tab, the Modify panel, the rotate command is right here, right in the middle. Let's open up a drawing. Let's look at the rotation examples file for chapter 6 and open that up. Here we already have a few lines drawn at specific angles and some text objects to let us know exactly what those angles are. So start the rotate command. Select the object that you want to rotate. You can pick one or you can pick several. You can pick any type of object in AutoCAD. Press Enter. Now you need to pick a base point of rotation. That's the center point of where you're going to rotate from. If your ortho command is on, let's turn it off. Press the F8 key to toggle that off. As you can see, we're rotating around that base point. Think of it as a circle, and that's the center of the circle. That's your center of rotation. Here, everything will pivot around that point. The second point you select determines the angle amount you're rotating. So where I pick is where it will end up. Or you can type in an angle amount. So let's rotate this 120 degrees. And there you go. We can also rotate in the opposite direction. Select your objects, pick your base point, and then type in a negative number, negative 120 in this case, press enter. And that puts our lines right back to where we started from. A positive angle of rotation will rotate your selected objects in a counterclockwise direction. Same way when AutoCAD draws an arc, it draws it in a counterclockwise direction. So it starts here on the right, moves up and to the left, then down to the right. The negative direction or the negative angle goes in a clockwise way, 360 degrees. Now the angle of rotation is based off of the horizon. You may have noticed that, or due east, or to the right of your screen. Your angle starts there horizontally, and it comes out from your base point and then goes up from there. So when I grab this line drawn at zero, it looks like I'm rotating it from the line itself. Well, I am in this case. But if I grab one at 45 degrees, the base point, as you can see, I'm starting off here, which is my angle of zero. And as I rotate up, the line that I'm rotating has a 45 degree angle from where I'm at. So if I need this line to go 45 degrees, I just type in 45 degrees. It's relative. But if I need it to go to the 60 degree line, I have to do some math. I can go 60 degrees, which is where I want to go, minus where I'm at, leaving me at 15 degrees. So I have to tell it, rotate positively 15 degrees. And there it is. There are two lines here now. If I want it to go to a specific angle, I can do something different. I can type in my rotation command. Select my line, enter my base point, and if I want it to go to that 60, I can just type in rotate 15 degrees. But sometimes you have no idea what that angle is. You don't know what the angle is you need to be at, and you don't know what the angle is that you're currently at. So, for example, let's cancel that out and let's just draw a line at any angle. We have no idea what this line is and what the angle of it is. So let's start the rotate command. Select the line, press enter. Now pick your base point, which is right here. Use your O snaps. Now type in R for reference. Press enter. We want to pick a reference angle or a reference line. 
So typically you're going to want to pick the exact same base of rotation point again. And then you want to pick a point on your line, which is going to be the end point in this case. And now instead of starting at the horizontal position, I'm starting here. And I can put it exactly now where I want it to. Right there. We zoom in, we can see this line is drawn right over the top of it. So I had no idea where I was at, but I put it exactly where I wanted it to go. And that's a great feature. So let's look at these angles here, and we'll do the example again. Type an RO, pick your 15, enter, base point. If I want this to go to 30, and I type in 15 degrees, it goes there. If I rotate again, select my object, enter, pick my base point, and now go to reference. You can pick it right on the command line or just type in the letter R. Repick your base point of rotation, pick the end point, and now type in the number 30. It went right to the 30 degree line. It didn't rotate 30 degrees, but it went to the 30 degree line. So that's fantastic. If I have a line, drawn at some weird angle that I don't know, I could take the time and measure that angle again, or if I want it to just be horizontal and go to the zero angle, start the command, rotate, pick my base point, pick my objects, hit R for reference, my same base point of rotation, my same point here, and now I type in zero, and I'm horizontal. That's a cool trick. So you have two basic ways to rotate your objects. One is by a relative angle, and then one is to an absolute angle. There will be different cases and different reasons to use either one. It just depends on their situation. Now there was another option. You may have noticed it. If we pick our base point again, of copy. Copy will rotate the line work again, but it will also leave the original where it is. I type in 90, there it goes. So it copied and rotated that line. So that's a, something that could be very useful to you as well.